Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to install a dual battery system in your four-wheel drive. It's so easy to do and we basically went on a budget, alright? So we already had this King's 120 amp lithium battery and then we've also bought the Renogy 40 amp DC-DC charger and also the Kickars dual battery kit just to wire everything up. So, let's get into it. Okay, so I just quickly want to show you everything that we have here. So to start off with the King's 120 amp lithium battery, like I said, I already had this battery. Now the reason why we're going to be using it in the car instead of the caravan is because we're going to be traveling with the car a lot and doing day trips, that sort of thing. So it's nice to have a light battery and the maximum um, current that it can be recharged at is 100 amps, which is good. So the 40 amp energy charger is going to be plenty enough and I reckon that's going to be uh, very suited for this particular battery. Obviously, if you have a bigger battery set up like a 200 amp, then you might consider like a 60 amp battery or higher. Now quickly with the energy, so how the DC-DC works is there's the positive and the negative from the starter battery and then on the other side positive and negative that goes to the King's battery. Now on the side is the ignition switch. Now what that's for is if your car has a smart alternator, you'll be needing to wire up the ignition wire as well to basically trigger it to go on. With my car though, it is not a smart alternator, so we don't need to install that. On this side is a battery temperature sensor. Now, if you have a lithium that doesn't have a BMS, so a battery management system, then you need to connect it up. But it's important to read the manual because I didn't know this, but when I read the manual, the Kings does have a BMS, so we're not gonna be using the battery temperature sensor, and that's about it. So without further ado, guys, let's now show you how to install it. Okay guys, so just very quickly, depending on the DC-DC charger that you use, they may not require a VSR because it has it built in. So just make sure to do your homework because we went out and bought the VSR kit for the kickers, but when I read the manual, we actually don't need it. So we're only going to use the wiring for it. And the reason why we went with kickers is because they make good gear. We already have another kickers um, system for the caravan, which we love and rate. So that's why we're going with it. So let me show you how to connect it up. Okay, first up is the power wire. So you want to look for a grommet in your vehicle on this particular car, the Pajero, it's on the passenger side. So there's a grommet that you need to wire through the power cable. And as you can see, it's now connected up to the battery. Um, so once that is done, we can now move into the car. Okay, so I just pulled the cable through the grommet. So you just want to poke it through as much wire as you can and then when you look inside the car up there behind the cabule you'll see the wire coming through so just take it and then just run it across here so as you can see it's nicely tucked away inside the floor then we just feed it right to the back and then you can put this panel back on as well um, just to make everything look nice and factory awesome so here we have all the wires that now came to the back from the battery so just make sure you don't touch the body or the ground because then it will short out the fuse so just make sure you put it somewhere safe otherwise just disconnect your battery entirely what also comes in the kit is a ground wire so that is good and another positive wire but you actually need two ground wires so you need to ground the starter battery and you also need to ground the auxiliary battery so I just bought another one of these at Repco um, so then you'll be good to go because as you can see one side will go in off this side of the DC and the other side out on this side so yeah the other thing if you want to ground it so I'm just gonna put the battery here so I want to make sure I would ground it to a nice solid point so what I'm gonna do is take one of these covers off on the seat at the bottom and actually ground it to the seat and then it will be good so let's do it now and show you what it looks like.
Perfect guys, so there you go, super easy to install, so basically just make sure your starter battery is connected to the left side, which is the alternator side, and then on the right hand side, um, it just connects straight onto the battery. This is just a ATEM power battery box, I've had these, um, well this one for a, a long time, so it's pretty good, there's some Anderson plugs at the back, some cigarette lighter sockets, that sort of thing, and you can also turn it on now. So there you go, happy days, the battery is now running, so we can get this fridge started up. In terms of the energy guys, so if you have a look, you can see um, it has a solid green, so that just means it's on standby now, and it's good. Whereas when the car is on, it's going to trigger the DC-DC to turn on, basically, and charge the battery, and then it will just be flashing. And then you can also press onto the button to make sure it goes to the right battery. So whether you have an AGM, Magel, or Lithium, according to the booklet, Lithium is blue. So we're just gonna click on that now. So it goes to blue. There you go. It is good to go. Hey guys, it's actually now a week later because we got hit by a storm the last time we filmed. But anyway, here we are a week later and I've also decided to get this Bluetooth module because you can then monitor your battery. I've also had this fridge running for three, four days now constantly um, just to see what it's doing with the battery and also the DC-DC charger. Now it's fair to say it's now at 13.1 volts. Now the good thing about this Bluetooth module is that you can connect it to the DC Home Renergy app. So I've now connected to the app and as you can see, it, there's only about 50% left of this battery. And we only did about a half an hour drive every single day. So that means it's not quite enough um, for the fridge to run constantly. So if you are planning on running your fridge constantly, I would highly recommend either getting a bigger charger, a bigger battery, or the same setup, just with a solar panel as well. But keep in mind, this DC-DC charger is not solar compatible, so just look for another version that is solar compatible, so when the car is off, it switches over to solar. I reckon if I have a solar blanket or just a solar system permanently mounted, then happy days, this fridge can run 24-7. So yeah, guys, that is pretty cool. But anyway, uh, let me show you more about this app. Awesome guys, so we now have the car running. I just wanted to show you this app as well. Um, so when you go into the app, you can actually look at all the figures. So you can see the battery amperage output is now 40.03 amps, so it's right on, which is cool. You can see the battery temperature, the battery voltage as well, and the charging watts, which is awesome, and also the DC-DC temperature and so on. So that is pretty cool to know at how many amps your battery is actually getting so yeah that is cool awesome guys well there you go so that is how you install a dual battery system so it's very nice and easy to do and i reckon it works a treat since then we've also um, partnered up with Renergy, so we are now authorized dealers as well guys which is awesome so if you're interested in any Renergy products feel free to reach out or jump onto our website to have a browse so that is awesome so for our particular setup, I reckon it will be fine because we're going to do a lot of driving. So this battery should be uh, topped up very nicely. But in the event that it's actually not working quite well and we find ourselves parking up for a few days, then I would probably recommend getting a solar blanket. So we'll see how we go, but maybe in the future we're going to add a solar system to the car just to keep that battery topped up. But yeah, guys, thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, comments, Make sure to drop it down below and we'll get to you then. Thanks guys, see ya.